So I'm actually here representing our lab, which is 15 amazing young scientists who just started working on understanding the global carbon cycle with respect to ecology. And we're also very excited to say that in the next few months, we're going to be wel welcoming Felix to actually join our lab, uh, who's going to be doing a PhD in the process. So it's going to be very exciting times for our lab in the next few years. But ultimately, we're not just understanding ecological processes, but how they interact with the climate and how we can answer the children's questions to be able to guide restoration throughout the world. So this is what we're interested in. It's the carbon cycle. This is a NASA simulation of carbon dioxide concentrations in the atmosphere. And what I want to just point out is the red colors in the northern hemisphere indicate high levels of carbon dioxide. But as the calendar moves through the months and we move towards the end of spring and early summer, leaves emerge on the trees uh, all over the northern hemisphere. And that draws carbon dioxide down, concentrations down from the atmosphere, and it becomes yellow and then blue and then clear colors. So this is an ecological process that is completely governing the carbon cycle. And understanding that process is critical if we're going to understand climate change and be able to make strategies that, that can be used to address it. So I got connected with Plant for the Planet a few years ago when I spoke with Felix and they were sort of wondering how many trees are there in the first place? They were aiming at planting a billion trees around the world. But we didn't know how many trees there were to start with, so we couldn't tell if that was, we couldn't tell the magnitude of these efforts. We couldn't say if that was a huge contribution or just a useful one. So we generated the first global map of forest trees around the world using satellite data and ground sourced forest inventory data so that we could understand how many trees there are in all the pixels across the world. And this revealed, in essence, that there were just over three trillion trees on Earth. So obviously, this puts the billion tree campaign into context. So if, if you imagine each of these little trees, it represents a billion trees in the world. The billion tree campaign was going to be great, but it was going to be this, this contribution. And that's not the magnitude of the efforts that Felix and the children are aiming for. So the movement to the trillion tree campaign is really going to have the magnitude of the impacts that we're hoping for to impact the climate at a global scale. But this map doesn't just show us how many trees there are. It also shows us in information about the structure of the forest around the world so that we can predict which kind of animals live there and what kind of habitat it is. And it also can tell us little things about the carbon cycle so it can help us to improve those climate projections. But more importantly, it also helps us to see how many trees are lost each year. And we can see that through fire and deforestation and, and disease, we're losing about 10 billion trees each year. And we can also use it to understand how many trees can be restored. So when we map our, our forests into the IUCN's restoration areas around the world, we can see that there is room for about 1.3 trillion trees. And if all of these trees, I would add, there are currently forests in many of those areas, but if we can restore those forests to a healthy living state, they have the potential to one day capture up to 28 gigatons of carbon per year. Now that's double, more than double, what humans are emitting at the moment. But I won't get your hopes up too much because m not all of that carbon stays in the trees. To understand where that carbon goes, we need to look at the soil, where the trees connect with the earth. So plants govern the carbon cycle, as I've said. But when we look at the individual plants, what's happening is they're photosynthesizing. This photosynthesis process draws carbon in into the, into the plant. And that, that carbon is then converted into carbohydrates within the cells. And ultimately, a lot of the carbon gets sucked down towards the roots, where it feeds thousands and thousands of microorganisms that live in the soil. And this process literally forms the soil. And this, car this soil stores a huge amount of carbon. So really, the plants are the carbon pump, and the soil is where all, a, a lot of the carbon is stored. So when we remove trees from an ecosystem, the soil also gets depleted. Adding trees literally is the same as adding carbon to the ecosystem. But we know that a lot of that is respired away into the atmosphere from the trees, and a, larger pro and a, a slightly larger proportion is, is released into the soil. But in a very depleted soil, a lot of that carbon gets lost. And it's run away, and it's de uh, degraded, and um, weathering means that we lo lose a lot of that carbon. Over time, though, a microbial community develops. And that sucks up a lot of the carbon. And then only a smaller proportion of the carbon is lost through microbial respiration. And over more time, we develop a healthier ecosystem with animals that eat those microbes. And even a smaller amount of the carbon is lost. And ultimately, when we have a very healthy networked ecosystem living in the soil, almost all of that carbon is trapped within the ecosystem and recycled. And this soil can store carbon for hundreds to even thousands of years. So really, when we think about the global forest system, 
we estimate that it's storing currently in the order of about 400 gigatons of carbon. If we were actually in the soil below those trees, we're storing even more. So if we added an additional trillion trees, that's going to be over 100 gigatons of carbon potentially one day stored within the soil, within the, within the trees, but over 200 gigatons potentially stored within the soil. But as I say, this takes a very long time to take, uh, long, it's a long process. The trees need to grow, they need to capture huge amounts of carbon, and the microbial community in the soil needs to develop. So what we really could focus our efforts on, and it's very worthwhile focusing our efforts on for now, is restore, rest, uh, conserving the ecosystems that currently exist. The forests that currently store huge amounts of carbon and support thousands and thousands of, thousands of organisms around the world. So not only the restoration of forests, but the conservation of those forests globally can be really valuable in the fight against climate change. So that just leads me to thank the lab, and they will be here to answer all sorts of climate-related questions later. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Tom. <laughs> Wonderful.